I got it. Sorry. Run a little behind today. That looks pretty good. I actually spent half this time trying to figure out where we were because that whole Sunday thing getting in between our last meeting together. I've got dogs all over me. Let's see here. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, John, chapter 20. We didn't quite finish it. And so, John 20, starting in verse 30, it says, And Je truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of, the, of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. So the Gospel of John is often uh, given away as a, a gift uh, or as a, a gospel track. And the idea is that John wrote that we might believe. We find things like John 3.16 and other really important verses uh, as far as sharing the gospel is concerned. And so, yeah, he's written it that you might believe. Uh, we're going to read it again, and I don't want to teach it now and teach it again later, I guess. But he did many other signs. <coughs> Ooh. Ooh. God bless me. And that's where he kind of concludes the next chapter, is by saying how Jesus did so many things that if they tried to write it all down, they never would have gotten it all written down. Let's just break right into chapter 21 today, and we're going to see where we get. So after these things, and for what it's worth, this last chapter of John is unique uh, we don't see it in the other Gospels, and instead of ending on the Great Commission, we have a very personal and kind of an intimate interaction between Jesus and his disciples. So, verse 1, it says, After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and in this way, he showed himself. Now, Sea of Tiberias, same as the Sea of Galilee, Gennesaret, Kinneret, there's all these different ways to name the Sea of Galilee. Tiberias was the large uh, Roman-built city uh, named after Caesar Tiberius. And so that's why it gets that name of Sea of Tiberius. It just kind of depends on who you talk to. Tiberius is often where you stay if you uh, go visit the Sea of Galilee. It's the big city with all the hotels. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin... Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We are going with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. Very often when we go through seasons, we go through seasons of trials, seasons of tough times, disappointments. Sometimes, most often, we are tempted. This dog's chewing on stuff. We're tempted to go back to the stuff that we're used to. We're going back to the stuff, you know, that we once used to go to before we came to Christ. And there's always that temptation to go back to what's familiar, go back to what's comfortable, go back to, and it's not a place we should go necessarily. Jesus came to Peter and he told him that I'm gonna make you a fisher of men. That was the goal. Not to be a fisher of fish anymore. But I think at this point, they were a little discouraged and dismayed. They went up to Galilee because Jesus actually told them that's where he was going to meet them. There's only a few small references, and people probably overlook those sometimes, but Jesus says, I'm going to go meet you on the mountain up near Galilee. Uh, and so, they're up in the Galilee region waiting, maybe. And maybe they were waiting on the Lord, and they became impatient because God wasn't answering. So they go back and, well, I'm just going to go fish. I'm going to go back and do what I've always done. But you'll find that when Peter goes there, he catches nothing, right? He goes back to his old ways, his old habits, his old things, and you don't catch anything. And that's, I think, 
the idea about being a believer who's also trying to be part of the world. Hi, dog. Is you can't have one foot in the church and one foot in the world and be happy. You're going to find yourself miserable because you have too much of the church in you to love the world, but you have too much of the world in you to feel at love at church. I found that really peace and blessing and all those things that God offers, it only ever really showed up in my life when I gave 100% of me. When I was always giving God just some of me, it never was all quite there. I mean, I could see it, I could sense it, I could tell, but there's a difference between when you give God your all and when you give God some. Because God's looking for a throne in our hearts, not a love seat. He's not looking for you know, a timeshare. He's looking for us to make him the Lord of our lives. But when he does that, all the blessings come and all the stuff that, there's just nothing else that's more valuable. I can look at just one promise, Philippians 4, 6, and 7, where we're told that if we take everything to God in prayer, we have no need to be anxious, and in fact, the peace of God that surpasses understanding will guard our hearts and our minds. And I need both guarded at times, right? I need my brain being guarded because it goes one way, and I need my heart being guarded because it often goes the other way. That's the thing, is just that promise alone, to know that I can have peace that surpasses understanding, it makes me realize how foolish it is when I'm tempted to go back into old ways and old things. It makes me realize how foolish it is to think that I could ever go back. But Peter is going through a tough time. And we're going to watch the restoration between Christ and Peter uh, in a little bit. But for day, today, I think that's just a good thing to chew on. Right? Are we giving Christ our all? Are we giving him a hundred or just a little? And are we being tempted to maybe go back? to old things and old ways because we're, we're not satisfied and so we think that maybe going back is going to make us happy. But at the end of the day, it never seems to. So, God bless you guys. Have a great day. It's very smoky here. Hopefully the weather picks up. I will catch you guys later.